we just take so much pride and care in serving this community and making sure that everybody has access to the top quality care that that does not need to be traveled to, that you can get right here in your own very community. So you all being here, your continued support, you trusting us with your care is, from the bottom of my heart, we just really, really appreciate it. So this is really a time, as you can see, there's not a lot of tables. It was by invite only, so you are the special ones that got invited to this wonderful event. And what I would encourage you all to do is make sure that you are mingling within your groups and asking good questions. And we have some wonderful physicians that are going to be your tour guides. They're going to be talking to you all. Brittany is our uh, tour group leader today on this white coat tour. So these have been, uh, I guess, in suspense since uh, before COVID. So it's the return to the right white coat tours. What, what can we expect today? Um, I think we just want to highlight some of our newer surgeons that have come since COVID and um, try to display the services that we have to offer to our community. So. You know, as I walked in, I noticed, oh my gosh, there's some new paint, there's new flooring, there's a lot of new here. Yes. Yep. So we're specifically seeing some areas of uh, surgery and sports medicine today? Yes. Yep. So we have uh, two orthopedic surgeons and then we have uh, thoracic. Dr. Kakarni is going to display the robot. Dr. Kulkarni, you said you were a, a late adopter to robotic surgery. What is it about the current uh, state of robotics that brought you on board? So I really took this on about 10 years ago when the technology improved and I was able to work in smaller spaces, uh, be able to have 360 movements, and also the stapling uh, we were able to control our own staplers. So uh, as good as Dawn is, um, she used to run the staplers for me in the past. Now I run my own staplers. And so I have better control of movement. Um, and precision is so important in uh, working with lungs and heart uh, because just a slight degree of variation and you can get into a lot of bleeding. So I like the ability to control. I like the maneuverability. I like the visibility. So. I adopted about 10 years ago and I haven't looked back. It surprises me how much technology there is. Uh, you have to be more than just uh, a, a knowledgeable medical practitioner. You have you have to know a lot about uh, equipment and technology in your job. Uh, I do, but I think the whole learning process is not, you know, we don't read a book and we learn how the machine works as we work with them. And uh, being in, that, in this field for 12, 13 years now, um, you kind of learned and the technology has changed through uh, the last five, 10 years too. I noticed you have a lot of price tags on uh, items um, it kind of looks like the Price is Right showcase here. Yeah. So they put these around, so if you break something, you know how much is coming out of yeah, your paycheck? It, it is It is charged on our paycheck. Yeah. So you gotta, we do, we are very careful about, oh, we are careful about choosing the proper material and make sure that is uh, cost efficient for the hospital too.
So there's orthopedic medicine, uh, sports orthopedic medicine, and you, you specifically choose to be a sports orthopedic surgeon. Why, why sports? What's the big deal about that? Well, I've always played sports my whole life, and you know, I was always drawn to it. And then when I came, went into orthopedic surgery, I just loved the procedures that were performed. It's you know, repairing tendons and ligaments that are that are torn, and uh, specifically the the patients that I treat. You know, they're generally athletes or people that are looking to get back to their line of work or their sport and their field, and uh, they're driven to do it. So it's uh, really rewarding to be able to help them out and get them onto the road to recovery. Uh, expeditiously because someone is an athlete and they're you would think in good shape mm -hmm. physically does that make the recovery uh, that much faster it can but uh, it all starts back up here okay. and they have to be driven so are you an athlete yourself I, I like to play some sports yeah all right and you're seeing pickleball injuries now? Oh yes, lots of pickleball injuries, so people have to warm up, they have to uh, you know, be careful, but uh, still have fun. I'm Steve Belichick, I've uh, been coaching in Manchester since 1988. Uh, very passionate about high school sports, so with Napoleon and Manchester have a big rivalry. So we go to the uh, football game on a Friday night and have cardiac arrest on the sidelines. CPR for several minutes and without the AED I would not be here. Uh, they were able to stabilize me and get me to the hospital here and where I got four stints and before I knew it 11 o'clock in the evening I was talking to my family. But a as a coach you sort of take it for granted when you're, you're training. You know you're doing your CPR and you're going through your AEDs and stuff like that and you just sort of and until a situation like that hit me, I was like, how really important it is and what a great job the trainers do, uh, not only for athletes and coaches, and, but even spectators in the stands. So it's, uh, it, was a, it was so much of a blessing for me to be here right now. And, you know, like I said, without the trainers, without the fire department, without EMTs, without the, the great staff here, I mean, they did such a great job. And I'm just very, very thankful. You know, it's, uh, the, I don't think the trainers really get the recognition a lot of times that they really deserve, but it was uh, very eye-opening for me. So, when I tell them to repair, they usually bring the leg out this way, ways that it shouldn't move, mm. and then come down and across. Mm. So the leg is like this, and I'm on that side, but not only that, I put a hook around the thigh bone, and there's a hook that attaches to this, and to elevate the thigh bone out of the wound, I use this elevator, right? Now, the elevator doesn't know when to stop. It, it'll keep going, and then I won't even talk about what happens, but I'm, <laughs> I'm releasing soft tissue and doing, while I'm playing with this, and I, I release it just enough for me to elevate it and then start preparing it. Most of my cases are uh, done under a spinal anesthesia, so they know them from the waist down. It's a conscious station, kind of like a colonoscopy, so they're not aware of what's happening. But the reason we do it under a spinal is that they get less uh, the general anesthesia, there's a lot more complications, they're slower to wake up. And so all, what I do is rapid recovery. I want patients up and moving as fast as possible. The quicker they get moving, the better they do. I told, I told every group this, I tell people, this isn't your grandma's hip replacement, right? <laughs> patients used to stay in the hospital for two weeks. They go to rehab facilities, they get blood clots, pneumonias, infections, everything that could possibly go wrong, right? So everything we do now, when we optimize a patient for surgery, it's an elective surgery. So they should be optimized and fully ready for surgery. So we get them in, we wait for the spinal to wear off, and within two hours of reaching recovery, they're up and moving. Putting full weight on it right away, I tell patients, people typically use a walker for a week or two and then a cane after that. But they're working with therapy right away. They're oftentimes about 80 to 90% going home that night. Well, Emily and I were both on the White Coat tour, and it was really eye-opening. A lot has changed from the uh, time I first went on the tour about five or six years ago. Oh, really? So what, what's changed for well, you? Well, it seems like the, uh, the equipment is, uh, you know, more state-of-the-art and more modern and maybe even a little bit more expensive. 
it, it's definitely a very, very expensive. What I will say is that the technology has really evolved over time. So that's probably what you're seeing. You're seeing a lot of the robotic surgeries, which allow us to get people up, patients up quicker, get them home quicker and moving around and less addiction to opiates and uh, less pain meds needed uh, because we can get them up and moving and uh, yeah, yeah, back to, back to their activities. Yeah, and that's, I picked that up and also um, you get the impression that the patient uh, outcome, the patient satisfaction, uh, the whole experience is just as important as the surgery. Oh, absolutely. And what you really probably saw is the surgeons that were sharing about their specialty, it's really all about the patient. And the patient's the most important person in that room, in that OR suite, that operating room suite. And making sure that they're getting back to their life as quickly as possible is our most important opportunity. And what our, I learned from our cardiac surgeon was the collaboratives that we're working with other hospitals around the entire state so that our surgeons are constantly getting better and better at what they do each and every day. And the best part is that they can get care close to home right here in Jackson. Yeah, I, I live five minutes away. I almost want to get another surgery. Almost. <laughs> okay. No, no. Let, let's keep you, keep you out of here as much as we can. Yes. Well, it was great. A very eye-opening. Thanks for the tour, Emily. Oh, thanks for being here, Bart.